Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of 30 Years of Jurassic Park. A celebration of 30 years of our favourite film and a closer look at the actual paleontology of the dinosaurs present in the film thanks to information provided by our friends at Everything Dinosaur. Today we are looking at the Brachiosaurus, a towering titan which is iconic for one of the most beautiful moments in the original 1993 film. The Brachiosaurus appears in the iconic Welcome to Jurassic Park scene, helping to provide a sense of scale to John Hammond's reveal of the park on Isla Nublar. Seeing the Brachiosaurus climb onto its hind legs to eat from a tree is still one of the most iconic moments in both the film and indeed cinema history. The Brachiosaurus also appears in an animatronic capacity later in the film, with Lex, Tim and Grant having a rather snotty encounter with the large animal as they take shelter in the canopy of a tree. These gentle giants provide welcome moments of reprieve and wonder throughout the film, amidst all of the chaos which unfolds across its runtime. The Brachiosaurus would have been a massive terrestrial entity, and quite honestly I find it hard to imagine just how large these animals would have been, or indeed how they would have functioned. We asked Everything Dinosaur to provide a few interesting facts around these towering sauropods for us. Here's what Mike had to say. I think the Brachiosaurus is the first dinosaur that is viewed clearly by the cinema audience. In that iconic Welcome to Jurassic Park scene, both the paleontologists on screen and the audience get to see a dinosaur in its entirety. The director is making a statement, essentially look what our CGI can achieve, you, the audience, are in for a visual treat. The Brachiosaurus is certainly a visual treat for cinema goers, but scientifically this is a taxon that probably sits higher in the perception of the general public than its rather meagre fossil record would merit. Arm Lizard is very popular and instantly recognisable, but the genus was erected a long time ago, some 90 years before the film came out and the type species Brachiosaurus altiferax is only known from the Morrison Formation of the USA. Even then, it's only known from a small portion of that formation, as opposed to numerous other sauropods whose fossilised remains are found throughout the members and those subdivisions that make up the Morrison. Brachiosaurus fossils are rare. Other bones from the USA have been assigned to Brachiosaurids, but in most cases they can only tentatively be assigned to the Brachiosaurus genus. In short, we just don't have that many bones in the holotype to make a direct comparison. However, when Elmer Riggs formally erected the Brachiosaurus genus in 1903, he had a humerus and a femur, and based on the size of these immense bones, Riggs speculated that he had discovered the largest land animal that ever lived. The upper arm bone, the humerus, measures 216 centimetres in length, and it is still the biggest humerus known from the Jurassic. A few years after the publication of the description of the American fossils, extensive excavations in German East Africa, Tanzania, resulted in the collection of a large amount of brachiosaurid and other dinosaur fossil material. Based on these fossils, the German paleontologist Werner Janesk erected two more species of Brachiosaurus. From this point onwards, it was apparent to paleontologists that Brachiosaurus had a very different body shape when compared to other sauropods, the Diplodocids as an example. In 1988, just a couple of years before Michael Crichton penned Jurassic Park, the American paleontologist Gregory S. Paul highlighted significant differences in the bones associated with the African Brachiosaurus and those associated with the Brachiosaurus from the Morrison Formation of the USA. 
he still thought the African and American fossils represented closely related animals, but proposed the subgena be established, and he proposed Giraffa Titan for the African subgenus, which he termed Brachiosaurus Brachit Giraffa Titan Branchi. Further studies revealed quite substantial differences, and we now have the African fossils classified as the separate genus Giraffa Titan. The Brachiosaurus is an icon of the big screen, but not all icons can transition well into a toy line, and that is something which became clear in the original Kenner line, where the scale of the Brachiosaurus was too large to realise in the collectible toy line. The original Tim Murphy figure did release in 1993 with the Brachiosaurus in a hatchling capacity, including a blue version of the dinosaur complete with a capture cage. As JC outlined in his video revisiting this figure recently, this hatchling was the Brachiosaurus toy for the Jurassic line for many years. An independent Brachiosaurus figure wasn't available until 2001 in Wave 2 of the Reac Attack line from Hasbro. I got this figure in a recent haul from Connor Ontology, and although it is far from scale with 3 and 3 quarter inch figures and a little funky in its dimensions, it's still a cool inclusion for the Jurassic line. Of course, things were corrected more recently when we finally got a three and three quarter inch scale Brachiosaurus in the form of Mattel's legacy collection Brachiosaurus, something which has rightfully attained a place as one of the most iconic Jurassic toys ever released. Although the Jurassic line may have struggled with getting their sauropod releases in order, there is no shortage of sauropod toys available from other toy lines and producers. We asked Everything Dinosaur to share their favourites with us, and they said that there were lots of sauropod figures out there, with the sauropodomorpha extremely well represented in model ranges, so they decided to concentrate on the brachiosaurids, and they said there's lots to choose from at lots of different price points to suit everyone's budget. The first one that Mike highlighted was the Wild Safari Prehistoric World Brachiosaurus model introduced in 2013. He said it was good to see an American company, Safari Limited, making a Brachiosaurus model. The body proportions are about right, and it has a deep tail, the depth of the tail being one of the key characteristics that distinguishes Brachiosaurus from Giraffe Titan. The model is small, the head height is around 21 centimetres, but it is not an expensive replica and it represents an archetypal Brachiosaurus. Moving up in size and price, Mike would single out the Papo Brachiosaurus model. This figure was released in late 2012, and at the time it represented the biggest sculpt that Papo had attempted. It's a big, heavy, robust model representing a real bruiser of a dinosaur, which is ironic as production was delayed for months, with the figure proving to be quite challenging to make in large volumes. It has a head height of 32 centimetres, and when this figure is placed next to other Papo less dinosaurs models, it just dominates the other dinosaur figures. In short, it feels just as a real Brachiosaurus would. There are also bigger and more expensive options. Prime One Studio introduced a Brachiosaurus which purports to be a direct representation of the Jurassic Park Brachiosaurus, although Mike feels that its body does not look quite light, uh, right, as it's almost elephantine in shape. He personally prefers the more fluid and animated figures available, such as the W Dragon Giraffe Titan. If you are looking for a really big Brachiosaurus, then you might want to consider the Watchman Brachiosaurus series. The grey-green colour variant is out of production, but the brown figure is still available. Standing over 42cm tall with well-sculpted skin texture, and it also has an animated feel to it, almost graceful in appearance. Some really cool recommendations there, and some awesome products to check out.
We hope you have enjoyed a closer look at the Brachiosaurus, one of the largest and most beautiful animals to ever appear on screen in Hollywood. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode and come back at the same time next week where we will revisit a fan favourite carnivore, the Dilophosaurus. Massive thanks to Everything Dinosaur for supporting this series. Make sure to check out their website at www.everythingdinosaur.com.